Hi, my name is Ricky Geese. I'm the Executive Director of Kenai River Sport Fishing Association in Soldan, Alaska. We are concerned about fisheries across the state. We're concerned about sustainable fisheries, and we're also concerned about having the benefits be equitably distributed to all user groups who participate in those fisheries. The Kenai River supports the largest sport and personal use fisheries in Alaska. If the Kenai River personal use fishery was a subsistence fishery, it would be the largest subsistence fishery in Alaska. On the Kenai Peninsula, upwards to 25% of the annual protein needs of households are delivered through the sport personal use fisheries on the Kenai. Cook Inlet supports about a billion dollars of all fisheries values that are generated. So the commercial fisheries harvest about 80% of the catch and they generate about $200 million. The sport and personal use fisheries harvest about 20% of the catch and they generate about 80% of the value. So about $800 million is generated by the sport and personal use fisheries, 200 generated by the commercial combined, that's about a billion dollar industry for Cook Inlet salmon fisheries. The Kenai River is really interesting in terms of water flows over the course of the whole year. So during the winter time, we'll have anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 cubic feet per second CFS. And then in the summertime, as the water levels start to rise and the snowpack and the rain contributes to more fresh water coming into the system, it'll go upwards to 15, sometimes 20,000, typically peaking in July and August. Statewide, the sport fisheries generate about $1.5 billion worth of economic activity. Commercial fisheries generate about $6 billion worth of economic activity. The commercial fisheries harvest about 99% of the overall fishery resources in Alaska. That remaining 1% is split between subsistence, personal use, and sport fisheries. So when we talk about the distribution of benefits, looking at Cook Inlet, we generate about half of the overall values of sport fishing. It's really important. Cook Inlet is unique, it's different, and the main river that anchors the Cook Inlet fisheries is the Kenai. it up that river well I know I'm good as dead and it's a dangerous situation indeed that's how the Kenai River run looks to me you know what I get have trouble with is these fishermen feeling that they own the resource the public owns the resource and it should be harvested with them in mind. The consumer is the owner of the resource, not the fisherman that's going to go out and catch it. He's just harvesting the public's resource and it should be harvested in a manner beneficial to the public. Well, that's where we've reached. And it's not a case of me advocating it so much as a case of facing up to the fact that it's a finite resource and that the world's oceans are stressed and you've got to come up with some system that protects the living resource first and that this isn't a sports fishery the purpose of a commercial fishery is to provide food for people and a lot of fishermen have forgotten that and think it's a life experience. Well, if it's a life experience and you also furnish food for people, that's wonderful. It's a finite world. We've run out. There were only a billion people in the world when I was in grade school. 
there's five billion now. You know, it, if you're going to save the resource, you have to do something like this. And the fact that a certain percentage are afraid of what the change will bring, if you do nothing, the train change will be just as drastic and far less beneficial to the nation. Trying to catch those salmon before they make that river run. On the river there's sport fishers standing by. I'm just trying to get those fish before they die. I'm a king of salmon, silver, I'm a red. And even if I make it up that river, well I know I'm good as dead. It's a dangerous situation indeed. That's how the Kenai River Run looks to me. <laughs>